I'm here in my mom's shed and I just bought this brand new whoop band. This shed is where I first started my original online business, an online marketing agency that made me $50,000 a month, allowed me to travel around the world and actually have the life of freedom that I always dreamt of when I was working in this shed 10 hours a day. But you know what's even better than living in Bali, traveling around the world and making a bunch of money online? Knowledge. But in all seriousness, it was actually Ty Lopez's infamous Lamborghini ad that made me finally click by his $67 course, which was 67 lessons from his mentors that taught me to actually start the pathway of self-education, find mentors, and is what actually led me to starting this online business and being able to have the life of my dreams. And here are actually some of the books that I read. Richard Dawkins' The Bible Machine, Cash Advertising, great one for advertising. Living Untethered, great one to start, you know, spirituality. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, one of the best books of money I think you'll ever read. Even found my actual, one of my initial journals here with just all my notes that I was taking every single day while I was working in here. And today, since I'm back home visiting my mom from Bali, I'm going to share the six most important lessons I've learned over my decade in entrepreneurship so that you can skip a couple of steps ahead like I got to by working with guys like Ty. This first lesson is probably what I attribute to the 90% of my success. And it's this. All I did was stop stopping. I just didn't stop. Just stop stopping. This is what people do. You know, you don't feel like it today. You wake up, you're tired. I can't emphasize how important this is, right? The only reason why I was able to have success, get out of the shed, move into my dream penthouse apartment, you know, travel around the world is simply because I just didn't stop. Every single time I wanted to quit or switch to something else, I just stayed the course. And the funny thing is, is like when I started my online marketing agency, nobody who I actually started with is still doing it. And so you might think right now, the thing that you're doing is really difficult, really competitive and that everyone's, you know, more advanced than you. But the reality is, is that most people don't even last that long in the game. Most people can't even play the game for that long. And how do you actually practically stop stopping? Well, for me, the way I was able to do it was simple, falling in love with the game and basically taking this mental framework, which is to detach from the outcome, aka the 10K a month, the 20K a month, the freedom that you want, the body that you want, the woman that you want, and to attach to the inputs. Because when you focus your attention on the inputs instead of the outputs, that's when the needle actually moves because there's only so many places that you can focus your energy. If your energy is only focused on where you want to be, then there's not much energy left over for actually doing and producing the things that are going to get you to where you want to go. Lesson number two is probably the biggest hack out of all six lessons. Move countries to somewhere where it's a lot cheaper to live and you also have access to high quality people who are on the same path. For example, with me living in the UK, UK is a great country to live in, don't get me wrong, but I struggled to find people who actually had the same mindset that I have, right? And so two years ago, I decided to move across the world, get a one-way ticket to go to Bali where I didn't know anybody, but I knew that it would be a better environment for me, one, to be around like-minded people and two, to be able to live a higher quality of life for less. I literally knew one guy who I met online through an online course that I was in. We spoke twice over a Zoom call and I basically just moved to Bali and it was the best decision I ever made. Like the types of people that I was, I was able to met, meet were people that I used to watch online. And now those people are literally my friends, you know, the number one, number two, having just good weather. I can't explain how important it is. I'm back in the UK right now, about to head back to Bali. To be honest, like it's a bit depressing. Like it's a bit depressing when you don't have sunshine and it's not an excuse, but it is a fact. And, The third most important lesson I actually learned from Ty himself, which is to find somebody who's exactly where you want to be and to just do whatever it takes to get them to basically either mentor you or just be around them in some way. I remember a few weeks after learning this from Ty, a guy came into my university. I was 20 at the time. He was 30 and he ran a a seven-figure marketing agency in Norwich, which is where I went to university in the UK. 
And he did this amazing spe- speech on marketing. And I remember literally like alarm bells are ringing off in my head. I was like, this is the guy because he's not only got the business that I want, he's also got, you know, an amazing wife and a family and he's in great shape and he's very impactful. And he's just the type of man that I want to be, not just making the money I want to make, right? It's both. That's really important. And I, I was so scared to go up to him and approach him. I was so anxious and nervous. And I waited for every single other person in the room to go up and speak to him first. And it was just me left at the very end of, you know, I was the last person in the room essentially. And I went up to him and I just said, uh, hey, Marcus, um, I'd love to come and work for you for free. Thinking in my mind, like, that would be the best thing to like get him to want to spend time with me. And I thought it's a no brainer, right? It's free work. And he just kind of looked at me and laughed and smiled. And he said, no, (laughs) but we did go for coffee and we became friends. And it was only after I realized that him letting me work for him for free would actually be more of a liability to his company than, than any value I could provide because I didn't really know anything. But that said, we spent some good time together. I learned some skills and he actually was my first ever client for my agency. I worked, did ran Facebook ads for one of his clients and that gave me so much confidence and belief. And that's what I would say was one of the biggest things that mentors can give you. I just ran our first mastermind uh, in London uh, for Conscious Entrepreneur last Saturday and probably about six or seven of the guys out of the 20 or so were mentees that I that I work with. And so many of them now are just going on to just absolutely crush it. Yeah, you heard that past four weeks on Stripe, raise the camera, 30K. And then if you look at the year to date, January to April, 100K. Hitting records um, because they have a new level of belief because when you can like see and touch something, it becomes so much more real, which then gives you that belief. And I remember... One of my one of my favorite mentees, Shez, who's probably watching this, he the first thing he said, you know, we, we meet each other in this fancy Mayfair hotel in London, and he's like, "You're actually real. You're not, you know, you're not wearing you're not wearing a mask. You're not AI." And I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm a real human." And so that was one of the best things I personally did, which was just to meet all of the people that I personally aspire to be more like or look up to in a way because once you actually meet in person and you're actually like in close proximity to them you realize that there's really not that much difference between you and them and number four actually builds on from three once you've found what you want to do you found somebody to help you get there then cut out all of the noise I went dark for about a period of 18 months where I didn't use any social media I didn't really see people for a lot of time. Any single invitation I'd get, I just basically said no to it. I didn't do any, barely any traveling. And this actually allowed me to, is what allowed me to get out of this shed and I actually moved into my dream penthouse in London. And I remember at the time I was in Iman Ghazi's community and he reached out to me over Facebook Messenger because he saw that I was you know, doing well and he also interviewed me. During that interview, um, I kind of just gave away a lot of my secrets for the agency. Did you say 19 this week or this month? This this week. <laughs> so, so how many appointments are you having a month? Probably like 65, 70, honestly. Jesus. I thought I thought I did well last month with 30 to 35 uh, demos. But I said, don't put my name in it because I don't want people reaching out to me at the time. And tons of people like, were asking in the comments, like, who is this guy? Uh, how did he do it? And the reason why I didn't want my name in it is just because I didn't want any distractions, right? And so you have to have a period where you just go all in, you cut everything out, you burn the boats and you just fully, fully focus on your singular goal. And you have to like kind of cut out other goals and other priorities for a period of time. It's really hard to grow in business and in health and and in fitness and relationships and your spirituality all at the same time if you're just starting out. Now, once you've made some progress, you can do things more holistically, but that was what I did. Now that comes with one caveat which is even though that is what got me to the next level of success, the one thing I would change looking back is I wouldn't have done it on my own for so long. Like, yes, I kind of had mentor figures, but I was very, very isolated. And I probably isolated for maybe a year longer than I really needed to. Um, And so just bear in mind that like when you go through that phase of just being all in and zoned in, it shouldn't be forever, right? It should only be for a period of time just to really sprint to make that, you know, get you to that next step. It's like when a rocket takes off from the launch pad, right? 80% of the energy is used just to get it off the ground. Once you're off the ground, you're then flying, you know, you've got leverage, you've got momentum and things just get a lot easier. 
number five is one of the things that I've only learned later on in my life, which is that, you know, you spend so much time focused on creating this freedom, right? I call it external freedom, time, location, and financial. But that isn't worth anything if you don't have internal freedom, right? Freedom within your mind, your your thoughts, your emotions, your state, right? To be in a tranquil state. And for me, like, even though I'd achieved external freedom fairly quickly and early on in my journey, right? I was living in this penthouse, had a great girlfriend at the time, I was able to travel like I am now. But back then I had that, but internally I felt super anxious that I was going to lose it and fear. I felt insecure. I didn't feel worthy of clients that I was bringing on. I didn't feel worthy of the girlfriend that I was with at the time. Kind of felt like an imposter. Like I felt like I'd somehow made this thing happen, but I didn't actually feel like I was like, I, I earned it in a, in a weird way, even though I did put in the work. And I felt like an imposter, right? I felt like, like almost like a fraud for some reason. And it, and it plagued me. And what happened one day, this was during COVID, uh, the UK was going back into lockdown. So me and my ex flew out to Greece and, you know, I told some of you guys this story. We were sitting on top of this beautiful uh, Airbnb in Greece with a glass of wine, you know, overlooking the beautiful sunset. It was a picture perfect moment, but internally I felt so much fear and anxiety that it was all going to come crashing down, right? And 48 hours later, I opened my laptop and it was just cancellation, cancellation, cancellation from clients where I lost over half of my clients in 48 hours, right? And that was when I learned that you don't just manifest what you want. Like you're visualizing your future right now, which is great. But all of those negative thoughts that are in your head and all of those fears, guess what? Those are also manifesting into your reality. You don't just manifest what you do want. You also manifest what you don't want with the subconscious thoughts, programs, and emotions that are going around in your body constantly on loop. And so that led me onto more of a spiritual journey of like really learning how to change my internal state to actually change my external reality. And it's only since having the internal freedom and the external freedom now at this point in my life that I can say I'm living a truly fulfilled life where I'm not just making the money, but I'm also proud of the man that I am. I can also provide for the people around me, not just in material, also provide emotionally and, and be able to provide support and to be able to be present. You know, I remember I was on a podcast with um, my friend Hamza, you know, YouTuber, a lot of you guys probably know him, with my girlfriend. And he asked her, what is the thing that you were most attracted to? And I never really felt like that presence before no. from a man. And I was just like, okay, he's different. What Even though he's in presence? Bali. The way he just... And I thought that was super interesting. It wasn't the money. It wasn't the lifestyle. And she didn't even know what I did for the first couple of months of us meeting. But it was my actual presence, right? And no amount of money or fame or success can can give you that true presence and depth. You can only get that by working on your internal state and creating that internal freedom. Lesson number six, and this one's a little bit of a personal one. If I take you back to when I was in that first penthouse apartment that I moved out to in, right? I had the freedom. I had, you know, my nice fancy standing desk. I had my nice Herman Miller thousand pound expensive chair and things externally looked like they were going well. But I remember sitting there one day and just thinking, would it really matter if I wasn't here tomorrow? Like, would people really care? And it's a sobering thought to think, but the honest answer back at that time was no. Like, people wouldn't really care. And that was the day everything really changed for me because I realized that I'd sacrificed everything to get to this point of freedom, right? So I can take care of my family, do all these things, which I wasn't really even doing, to be honest. I got lost along the journey. And I realized that I was just living a very self-serving life. And that was when I learned from one of my other mentors, Tony Robbins, who I've been to his seminars every single year, was that the secret to living is giving. As cheesy as that might sound, it's so true, right? The fulfillment that you get, particularly as a man, from giving yourself something versus giving someone else something is you can't even compare. The getting yourself something is like this little dopamine high that goes away after a couple of days, right? You buy your fancy watch or car or, you know, all of these things. Like you get a little high and then you don't care about it. 
you know, a couple of days later versus when you are giving, right? And that can be financial, that can be with your time, that can be with your skills or expertise. It talks about this in the Bible, actually. But when you're able to give that, the level of soul fulfillment that you gain from that is just so much greater. And when I learned this, I actually applied this to the business I was running, which is an agency. The quality of the relationships I was able to gain with my clients just completely changed. And I've had clients with me for over five years in the agency at this point. And it's one, because of the work I did on my internal state and two, because I switched my focus on what can I gain to what can I give. So I hope these lessons were insightful to you. If you want to connect, you can DM me on Instagram. Peace. Speak soon.